somewhere, somehow, you got some good lawyers. I'm not a Disney lawyer, but you did something. Hello everybody, Princess Bear here, and we're back at Disney's Grand Florida Resort for the grand reopening, minus a day, of Narcoozies. It is season after that, it's April 2nd, it is the second day of Narcoozies opening, and we are here the day after we go on to California Grill to see how it compares. Yep, let's see how the new menu and the interior redesign went. So let's get some food. Be sure to, ah, uh, Little Mermaid. That was Little Mermaid, just so you know. You heard the girl. <laughs> walk into Narcoozies, there's this beautiful garden on either side of you. They use all of these ingredients in their dishes at Narcoozies, and it just adds an extra little touch of freshness that you love and appreciate at a signature dining restaurant. style glasses, but we're not getting catalled here. They're not charging us for still water. It's hot outside. Remember to hydrate yourself. You can never go wrong with a margarita. It's tried and true and safe and delicious and tart. Always nice to have a tart drink. Right? Yeah, decent margarita. Not the best that I've had on property, but not the worst either. It's tart, as a margarita should be. I probably should have asked for Patron, but I didn't. And I think I, I sold myself a little bit short by doing that. I will give it a two and a half out of five margaritas. It's average. It's nothing to write home about. I'm not going to proactively come here for this margarita, but it's delicious, so it'll be nice for my meal. So here we have not just a margarita, but the Grand Margarita. I'm assuming because it's the Grand Floridian. G Flow. And not because it's a Grand Margarita. G Flow. I'm just going to go ahead and cut them off there. We're not calling it the G Flow. We're not doing this. This hotel is no street cred. It's not getting anything from me. Nice short margarita on the rocks. Plenty of salt, that's your jam. Not mine, but each your own. Got some big flavor. I don't know if it's grand flavor, but some big flavor. Nice balance of the sweet and the sour. Works well, the kilo drinks rather smooth. No like harshness or like burn in your throat. How a good margarita should be. Is it gonna make me a tequila drinker full time? Probably not. It's still really, really good. Maybe it's three and a half to five bucks. Here we have the paper plain, which is bourbon, Aperol, and some lemon juice. Uh, the bourbon's unconfirmed vegan, so no apprentice is more for me. I'm gonna make show some bourbon a little bit lighter. Uh, look at the little spritz of the lemon. This is signature dining bourbon. Not bear bourbon, but signature dining bourbon. Fancy, like I feel like my fingers aren't dainty enough to pick up this glass, and I, I stabbed one finger, don't mind that. Ooh, it's tart. The lemon, the Aperol, it drinks like a bourbon lemonade. If it was a vegan bourbon, I feel like the princess might like this. But we try to un avoid the unconfirmed, the unconfirmed if they're vegan. Most of them usually are, but just to be on the safe side, she avoids them. It's a good bourbon drink. It's not as good as some of the bourbon drinks that I had to like wilderness launch, but it still wets my palate. I'm giving it an even three and a half out of five claws. sourdough let's go now I'm really excited this is like one little loaf loafy guy and they split it into fours but not fully cut so you got to tear some and since we just went to California Grill I'm kind of anxious to see how it compares this is really hot almost burning my fingers hot cheers now I do have oil I don't have earth balance and I don't have that beautiful roasted tomato goodness and I had a California grill but it is what it is. 
the olive oil is nice. It gives it a nice, like, pungent flavor. But, so, the bread is good. It's, it's just sourdough. There's really, like, nothing to write home about it. It doesn't stand out in any way, shape, or form. It's not California grill level bread. But it is good bread. It gives good bread. It's not that gluten-free roll that we have to have at most places. So I, I'm gonna give them points for that. I'm gonna give it a three and a half out of five breads. It gives decent bread, like the kind of bread that you would brag to your friends about in a chat, but you wouldn't actually physically like speak it into existence, if you know what I mean. So we love a good sourdough, a good bread. A good restaurant that knows what's in their bread is what we want. We run into so many restaurants that have like a variety of bread, but they don't really know what's in them. This, made in-house, fresh, gives us exactly what we need. Warm piece of crispy outside sourdough, super warm center, it is very hot. And I'd rather know that it was hot and fresh than sitting in the back, pull out of a package somewhere. Now it comes with this uh, sea salt butter, which goes well with this uh, seafaring themed restaurant. I will note one thing as we come in there, they're playing a lot of sting in here. Sting, I wanna know what sort of leverage you have against disease when you plan your music on these parts. Somewhere, somehow, you got some good lawyers. I was gonna say lawyer, but you did something. Ember's new group. Either way, let's take a minute to just see salt tower. Bread is so crispy and delicious. You swear that we didn't walk into a bakery and not sit at the restaurant. This is peak sourdough. They sit in everything right. It's like pre-dinner bread. It's four and a half out of five points. It's not anything out of the ordinary, but it's doing everything that makes sourdough sourdough so well. It's hitting high scores. Hitting the basics, and sometimes you need a good score. The entree has become the appetizer. In the before times, before this place was remodeled, my app was the most incredible barbecued eggplant that was crispy, and then my main was usually gnocchi. Now, my appetizer is gnocchi. Just a general gnocchi. It's not like, you know, the carrot gnocchi that I got at um, Surf Club in the past but it's got like a nice little ragu action here and um, some shrooms. Um, honestly, I'm, I'm a little bit scared, I'm not gonna lie. These be good. The sauce sets the snowy off. It's cooked perfectly and then it has this nice like crispiness around it so it doesn't like mush in your mouth, which does happen sometimes if you don't cook gnocchi properly. So I do think this is elevated from the last time I had gnocchi here. A little bit better than the turn club. I'm gonna give it a four out of five gnocchi. It's not as good as the old barbecue eggplant, but it's a contender. Plant-based gnocchi looking like a forest. I haven't seen something look like this since the uh, swamp combos, which was a gnocchi, from Yacht, from Yachtsman Steakhouse. Uh, but it is definitely feeling of the forest with this. You got all the little mushrooms, the greens, this tomato-based sauce. These little cute little gnocchi. Cute little thing. I'm gonna go ahead and snatch up all the mushrooms I can. The princess isn't like dirt rooms anyway. Take a little bit of these greens. I want a full flavored bite. I see this at hats off of me. Am I gonna get lost in the woods? Or am I going on a great adventure? I can't even mention the texture. What's the flavor? Right here. The green stuck up in my mouth. Back of my mouth. Ooh. I think the mushrooms do a great job of sort of like bouncing out the acidity of the tomato based sauce. The gnocchi is warm. We'll cook. They are a little soft, which is fine. Gnocchi is, I feel like it's a perfect thing most times. Some people like it a bit more like soggy. This is maybe like a little bit soft and like disintegrate in your mouth. I think it's a good app. Solid app. I do miss the eggplant. But this feels very true to the menu of an Arcusis in the history of this restaurant. I'm gonna give it a three and a half out of five. I'm not gonna lie, when we saw the previews for the menu for the new Narcusis, uh this Delightful concoction is what I was looking forward to the most. It is a 
ocean-based charcuterie board. So normally charcuterie boards are like a mixture of meat and cheeses, of a varying degree of which I am able to stomach because you know, obviously uh, the lactose intolerant, the, the weakness of the milk leaving my body. Uh, but a seafood-based charcuterie board, that is something that gets my interest. Now, they have done all sorts of delightful things that you don't usually see with seafood here. So we have a lobster-based sausage, a pastrami spiced tuna, and then a charred octopus. It's probably the most normal thing on here. Lobster sauce. Turning lobster to sauce is never nothing that I would ever consider. We're in sort of apple foodish anyway, but this is interesting because usually I'm not a lobster person. I think lobster is sort of not worth the effort in most cases. Let's see if this changes my mind. Got a little bit of sauce on the bottom. It looks like sausage. The char like sausage. Those flavors. The delicateness of the lobster. The seafood home run. Somebody like myself that doesn't really think much of lobster. This is in the top tier of selling me on why it's such a good thing to have. Well, mixing in the sausage works so well. Something that's really just like another level of shellfish. But it's super tasty. And you get definitely the sausage feel from it. It works really well for me. I give that a four and a half out of five plus. Next up, we have the pastrami tuna. Well, there's a little salad, like, uh, like a radish salad here on the bottom as well. The definitely spiced, the pastrami spiced tuna. You can see the spice here on the side. A little bits of color. It's a beautiful looking thing. Look at that. Mixing one sushi. That is amazing. Take the normal, like, tough and chewiness of pastrami beef and translate that to tuna that melts in your mouth. That's excellent. That's a five out of five pause. That's on my very sassy list. Just eat a whole plate of just this. Serve to me just like this. I come here just for this and then leave. It's that good. I was not expecting that. And then we have the tried and true the chart octopus. I love chart octopus. Now I've been trying not to eat octopus actively as much as I used to. I don't really have a good reason for that. He's one that doesn't sound hypocritical for a bear or a non-bear. But either way, here I am again. Octopus and some pickled vegetables. It's got a nice char on there. Little, little suckers on there, it's a little tentacle. Try it by itself. It's a bit more tender than most octopus I get. Flavor very well, soak up seasoning. It's like been marinated in the sauce. Tastes good, no, it's chill. I'm um, usually, you know, octopus is usually served hot. You eat it chill, no problem with that. Um, if you have a problem with like textures, as with most octopus, you're not gonna like this. Honestly, it's probably the weakest thing on here, but it's still really strong. I'm gonna give it three and a half out of five plus. I'm giving the entire plate a strong four and a half. It's worth it. This is the this is the app to get. And I still have the shrimp and grits in the menu, which is my favorite. I've got shrimp, shrimp and grits tons of times. It's a five. Of, if it's still the same as it was before times, that's a five out of five all day. But this, this is probably my new favorite, even though not everything on here is sitting in a five. I like it. I'm impressed. So we have paella. We have paella so many different places on this channel. Um, Columbia Restaurant, Haleo, Katal, so many places. The presentation on this one is very different from any paella that we've had. The rice is actually at the bottom and the veggies are on top. So. I really feel like they didn't cook it in this pan that they served it in. But I'm gonna go ahead and dig in. I'm gonna grab a couple pieces here. Oh, I forgot one thing. Bear's gonna hate me for this, but they charred this lemon, and I love charred lemon. So I'm just gonna squeeze it on everything. All right. Now with the charred lemon, let's see how this tastes. 
very interesting flavor palette. Unlike any other paella I've ever had. Um, it's got like a, almost like a garam masala taste to it. So it, it's like a, almost like an Indian fusion style paella. Like, honestly, I feel like this dish actually belongs at Sanaa. It's just that interesting and tasty and, and the seasonings are unlike what you would expect out of paella. I don't taste so frito or anything like that. It's very interesting. It's very thought provoking, but not what you would expect from paella. I would think it's more like a, a pilaf with veggies. I don't know. Three out of five rices is good. It's just don't come here expecting to get paella. If you want real true paella, go to Hileo, go to Columbia Restaurant, or use our recipe that we have on our channel. This is not it. This is a fail for paella, but it's a very delicious dish. A hearty helping of paella. I love, love this little skillet they have it in. Um, the paella pan at home, but it look this nice. However, I'm loving the different veggies in here. We have artichoke, we have asparagus, you have some uh, halcyon birds, peppers, tomatoes, peas. It is absolutely filled to the brim with vegetables. Like a strong vegetable papaya. Like I'm looking at this, and if you kind of spread it out and like mix it up, it gives me paella vibes. It may not look like traditional paella, but I am open to Reinventions of an old thing. It's like it's like this restaurant. It's a reinvention of an old thing. This restaurant needed an update. Bring it sort of in the future that are in line with the rest of things in your restaurants. And this, I'm actually kind of excited for. So we're gonna dig in. I don't need that big one. I want all the veggies. I'm just want a couple of veggies. Greens. I want some of the whites. I want some of the reds. I'll even take the lemon juice. The princess put on here. I have to agree with the princess. I definitely get like fusion vibes. It's even like Spanish Indian fusion. But not in a bad way. It's very flavorful. In fact, they achieve these flavors with just the rice and the veggies and the lemon uh, without any sort of like alt meat to add to it. You can very easily make an alt meat paella, but making something different, going with just the vegetables and different flavors, how those vegetables mix together, it's very brave, bold, because you got some strong flavors in here. You got the lemon, the artichoke, the asparagus. Mixing it all in a dish and trying to make that feel cohesive isn't easy. And honestly, I think they did a really good job on it. Especially for like how filling paella can be. This is a perfect size portion with the perfect sort of flavors. I'm gonna solve four to five flaws. I think it's a better main than we had previously reopened. Definitely an upgrade. So here we have one of the new dishes, the blackened redfish. Uh, now this is quickly become apparently, according to the servers, their new favorite dish on the menu. It looks beautifully stacked with that beautiful two stacks of the blackened redfish and the sauce, the veggies, sometimes you got corn, peppers, the pearl onions in there, all sorts of deliciousness in there on top of this slaw. In the sauce. And this is a, let me just double check here, chorizo and sancho patch. So in, in addition to like the corn and everything else, there is chorizo in this base. So this isn't a pescatarian dish. There is some other meats in there, some sausage. Um, but these flavors, I'm excited for. I don't eat redfish that often. So uh, new fish makes for happy bear. And it's so beautiful, I almost don't want to wreck it. This is the prettiest fish stack I've had in a long time. But all good things must come to an end. Look at that. How beautiful that is. It's nice and flaky. The skin on the top of the redfish looks beautiful. With the hash. Look at that. Look at that stack. I'm gonna hold it up on the fork. That's nothing to me like chasing food around a plate. That's just beautifully stacked hash. The beautifully cooked redfish. Those thinly stacked pieces of potato. The corn to the trezo, perfect complement to the black and redfish. This flavor, it's like a, a delayed flavor bomb. The initial flavor smacks you in the face, and then it just sort of spreads out. It's like a hot sauce. It just gets better as it keeps going. It feels like one of those things that's so good, like you're almost cheating. Like you, like hash is usually like a breakfast or brunch thing. 
and then you have the, like this delicious fish, and then you add trees into it. It feels like a brunch item made for dinner, and I'm not mad about that. Um, I love it. I think I actually love it more than the shrimp and grits. Uh, I'm even five out of five plus. This is something special. Now I know there are some stands out there that love the old narcoosies and getting on the menu. Don't come. Everybody else, come eat this. My drop. when we can go to a restaurant where they have like a stamp on their ice. It's not as easy to read as a GF or an RR, but it's a Narcoozies and there's no other restaurant that has a stamp of their own restaurant name. Cheers to the old fashioned Narcoozies. Like I'm thinking about the old Narcoozies. I like the uh, raspberry, or not the raspberry, the rosemary. It kind of helps um, make the bourbon a little bit more palatable. But this is 100% a bear drink. This is too strong for me. Too much liqueur for my taste. It's just more liquor than anything else, and uh, it, that's not my jam. But like, if you're one of the liquor connoisseurs like bear and you just want to sip straight liquor, this is seasoned flavor extremely well and would be great. Like if somebody likes a straight drink and they just want a little bit of flavor, this will certainly deliver that to you. But if you like straight drinks, I guess just get it straight. Four and a half out of five rosemaries. This is a really good drink. It's so very curious for me for the princess not to enjoy drinking it straight but still rate it so high. That speaks volumes. I like a good stamped ice cube. I don't have many joys in life, but stamped ice cubes is a thing. It's a simple joy and I'm taking it. That sprig of rosemary smells delicious. Ooh, okay. The hands and old fashions are a hard sell for me. Most of my hands I've tried, I have absolutely dogged because I did not like them. Uh, not necessarily because there's something wrong with Manhattan, but it's like something that I'm trying to grow into. I'm a straight bourbon type of bear. I don't get fancy at home with those. I add smoke to them every now and then because I have got one of those little smoke things for a, a gift a while ago, but like, I don't do the fancy cocktails at home. But this, this is a Manhattan I can get on board with. This makes me want to sit it's an outside. Old not a Manhattan. Old fashioned. This is old fashioned dinner board. I can sit out here on the balcony, sit my little drink, a little smoker's jacket on, with no cigar because I don't smoke, and just sit this and watch the fireworks from Magic Kingdom. Happily Ever After season. But the place I want to watch Happily Ever After is here in this bar. That's my new spot. I'm going to give this four and a half to five bucks. This is extremely good. Cocktails Ahoy. Well, the dark and stormy is definitely looking like a Pacific Ocean squall. Typhoon, maybe like a cat too? The moon colors. No, we do. That's, that's, like, that's like a Polynesian sunset. Even though we're in the Grand Prix anyway. Look at that color. Sunsets don't get that pretty in Florida. Maybe so. Just that smell of the aromas. Now, one big change for Narcoozies that we've noticed, and we even called the bird manager, is you can get Narcoozies before, very, very, very rarely did they ever have any sort of specialty cocktail. It did happen, but it's basically just a straight bar. None of like signature cocktails or bean cocktails you come to expect from most signature restaurants. This is a night and day improvement already from what they had before. And you have a bar, people come visit the bar, come drink. Tell, tell the uh, beverage manager, Chris, how good a job he's doing. Now, they do make all these syrups, these drinks in house, right here at the bar. All traditional bar making tools. That sips like an alcoholic pineapple soda. With a hair of ginger, I'm in love. Five out of five claws. I should have got started with this. 
I started all wrong with the paper plane. I should have got this. No, not paper plane. I, I should start with this. I'm thinking about how we're gonna go. This, this is amazing. Beautiful dessert with cassis and caramel. Ooh. It almost reminds me of like a Hagen Dazs bar, or as we say in Farsi. Hawking dogs, but it doesn't taste like hockey, so hockey means dirt. Hmm. It's intriguing. It definitely tastes the berry and then chocolate. I was expecting a little bit more of a crunch, but it's still really delicious. Not hog though. But decent. I don't know. I'm thinking about like a three out of five desserts. It's really good. It's thought provoking, but it has this element of sugar free to it that just gives me childhood memories that I don't I don't enjoy. Yeah. Gonna be this, one. this is a personal PSA for Bear, but you know I'm always giving you date tips. Share dessert. Share dessert. Don't share feelings over food. Share dessert. That's it. That's that's a tip. We'll, we'll file that in Bear tip, dating tip like number four, five. I forget which one we're on. Maybe I'll make a list one day. Uh, but you have this nice hazelnut chocolate bar. You can see. All the nuts, and the chocolate, the cassis here, and the little edible flowers. I will never refuse an edible flower because that's my contribution to the plant-based community. I'm gonna eat your flowers. I don't. I don't mean anything else by that. Wow. This is. There we go. Pick some bear force in there. There's definitely more of a spoonful than I wanted, but here we are. It's very interesting array of flavors. Chocolate and hazelnut doesn't go well together. It's cheese cream. I have a little bit of sweet from the bitterness of the chocolate and the hazelnut. They get well together. It's a bit of a texture water slide. It's like the smooth cream to the crunchy bar to the soft chocolate can be a little off putting. But the flavors are good if you want like a dessert that's sweet but not feel like you're rotting your teeth eating. I think it's a good middle ground. Um, it gives me my Jack Daniels almond cake vibes from Coral Reef, but a bit different. I don't dislike it. I'm giving it three and a half out of five. Yeah, I'm sticking three and a half. Three. This is like literally my new favorite thing. All of our, our head chef and our sous chefs assigned this beautiful menu. We appreciate them and their hard work, and I want to collect all of the chef signatures. This is my new thing at Disney World. So, that has been the reopening of our cozies. I feel cozy. And I gotta say, California Grill started a new tradition for me yesterday, and I got chef signatures! I'm so excited! This is totally you my new You created a monster. McKay. You created it's a monster. It's my new McKay. This year from California Grill, you created a monster. It's She's gonna new, want it every place now. I, I love it. I want to get this, the autographs of all of the, the amazing cooks and teams and cast members that deserve the props. Means we need an autograph book then. Chef. Noah, Chef Michelle, Chef Alfred, you deserve all the props for this menu. We want to know what you guys think of the reopen, reimagine, new menu in our cuisines. We thought the flavors were excellent. This is definitely an upgrade compared to what the restaurant was before. Greatly needed. 
Um, there's anything to that's better, or like, let us know honestly if you're seeing this video now. You've seen California Grill, hopefully. Go back, watch that if you haven't. Please do. Let us know which one you prefer. Do you think Narcissus is better? Do you think California Grill is better? Yeah. There's anywhere else you'd like to see us go. Of course, the comments is always the place to find us. Hit the notification bell if you want to see other videos like this. And we have new videos five days a week: Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. We will see you soon. Be sure to subscribe, and if you don't comment. Bear will just yeet himself into Bay Lake, and then I will never be able to retrieve him. And maybe a gator will get him, or hey, maybe we, we, he'll we, just swim in We don't in talk the lake. about gators in Bay Lake, ma'am. Okay, he's it's just rude. gonna swim in the lake then. It's rude. I'm, I'm just going swimming. Lake's fine. But you heard the deal.